Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandal and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedom, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up is directed at those who have fallen through the cracks and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up, to stand up and fight back. Thank you for joining us for Speak Up. I'm Representative Kevin Avard. I sit on the Redress of Grievance Committee for the General Court, the New Hampshire House. Today's episode is about a widow, a woman who has been a victim of robo-signing and potentially mortgage fraud. She has a dilemma that is completely out of her control. She may be homeless, and she found no friend in the court system. That's what today's show is about. Thank you for joining us for Speak Up. Today we have a special guest, uh, Marie Miller, and State Representative Tim Comerford. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to the show. Thanks for Thank having us. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Well, we have a, uh, we have a different show today. Uh, we've been having shows specifically on the family courts, and of course then we recently had uh, uh, Mr. Jeff Frost in not too long ago who uh, had an issue with the Attorney General's office. You have a unique case yourself, Marie. Yes, I do. Now, you're a petitioner. You, you've, you've brought your petition to the House, uh, the State House and Redress of Grievance Committee? Yes, I did. And I believe your petition number? I don't 10? know. Number 10. 10. Petition number, number 10. 10. Petition uh, number 10. Yeah. So you, you basically called up uh, Representative uh, Comerford? To, yes. To yes, represent to you? to help me, yes. Right. So tell us about your story. What, what happened and who are you? I'm Marie Miller from Farmington, New Hampshire. And I got late with my payments on my mortgage note due to my son being unlawfully incarcerated. Mm -hmm. And my son used to help me with my mortgage. So when I got late, Nation Star sent a loan modification agreement to me and I signed it and had it notarized and sent it back to them the 21st of March of 08. If I may interrupt you mm -hmm. right now, Nation Star is a company that bought your mortgage? Did yes. You? And one day you, you, you went to the mail, you got this letter, and it looked like a piece of junk mail. Yeah. And you were just about to throw it out and you said, you know, I better look at this. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, correct. correct. And you opened it up. And here is your first introduction to Nation Star. Yes. And now you got behind on the mortgage because of uh, your son helping you out. Now yeah. you called Nation Star and asked for a modification, or they sent you a modification? They offered it to me. Okay. Nation Star offered it to me. So I sent out the loan modification to Louisville, Texas, and I also right away sent out a mortgage payment on the 21st of March 08 through Western Union because they said they had to receive it today. So I did, and then in April I sent another house payment, in June I sent another house payment, in July of 08 I sent another house payment, and then all my checks came back and I got notified by the Rochester, New Hampshire District Court that my house was under foreclosure. Hmm. So you were making the payments according to the, the loan modification? Yes. And they were going, th and you have the receipts? Yes, and, and, all the documents. And the fact that they were receiving those payments, yeah. you can prove that as well? Yeah. And now, Keep in mind, you're a widow at this point. Yes. You're, you're, I'm sorry that your husband passed. So, yes. Uh, 
the reason I bring that up is because you're kind of in a situation where, okay, I'm looking for a little help here. Yes. Uh, a yes. little bit of reasonableness uh, on, on the part of the mortgage company. Yes. So take us from that point now. They, the district court is now letting you know that uh, you're in foreclosure? Yes. Even though you were making the payments? Yes. All right? Yes. Uh, Tim, how does, this, how does this strike you? What, what? Well, the, the original judge from Stratford uh, County Superior Court, uh, Kenneth Brown, actually made the right decision. He ordered that Nation Star produce the original mortgage note uh, wedding signature within 20 days. They never produced such a document, and the, the judge that the case was remanded to after that, uh, Marguerite Wageling, just ruled in favor of Nation Star without any recourse to Mrs. Miller's rights. Contrary to uh, uh, part of the Uniform Commercial Code under New Hampshire RSAs, it's uh, RSA 382-A colon 3-501. It's called presentment. Since a mortgage is a negotiable instrument, presentment's when you demand payment. And that the statute says that upon demand of the person to whom presentment is made, the person making presentment must exhibit the instrument, give reasonable identification, and if presentment is made on behalf of another person, reasonable evidence of authority to do so. Nobody showed up, nobody produced any notes or any authority to do so. Uh, the, the second judge was acting totally contrary to statute. And they still went forward and... And, and they still went forward. Uh, you know, Marie appealed to the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court remanded it back to Stratford County Superior Court. Now Judge Lewis has this matter and it hasn't been scheduled yet for a for a hearing and they've issued a writ of possession again. And uh, back in, in February, I went to court with, uh, with Marie and Nation Star withdrew all of their motions when Marie demanded the note, but the, uh, the lawyers for Nation Star didn't say whether it was with or without prejudice. So the judge, Wageling, assumed that, oh, you know, we don't think they intended to call it with prejudice, so we'll allow them to make another motion, and that's where we are now. Interesting. So what happened to the first judge? They, there's no, they're no longer on the case. No longer on the case. And the fact that uh, Nation Star didn't show up for the first hearing? It, that's correct. They didn't produce any documentation when they were ordered to do so within 20 days. That nothing ever, nothing ever uh, was entered into the record. And there's no legal standing for that to, to I, I, I don't follow. How, how can they go forward with, the, with her? She was making the payments, right? Right. She was. It shouldn't go forward, but the problem we have is that New Hampshire is a non-judicial foreclosure state. 23 states are judicial foreclosure states where you need to start the foreclosure process with the, a with the judge. But New Hampshire is a non-judicial foreclosure state, so they can run it through a mortgage mill service, which is known as MERS, the Mortgage Electronic Registration System. Is that what happened here? I, I believe it's a case of, a case of MERS uh, chain of title issues. See, what happens is that mortgages were bundled into securities, as you know, when the 2008 uh, caused the 2008 financial crash. And that securities change hands so frequently, they, they lost the, uh, the chain of title. Because companies that you know, prog uh, profit from the mortgage payments were often not the same parties that negotiated the loans because MERS was their agent. So instead of properly assigning them, they lost the chain of title. And now what you have is uh, stuff called the Simon and Blank, which uh, in Ibanez versus U.S. Bank in Massachusetts, the judge ruled that assignments in Blank from MERS can't convey a thing because they're not legally uh, acceptable. But here in New Hampshire, you can here in New Hampshire, it seems to be the case that they're going along with it. These assignments in blank, they create the assignment of the, of the mortgage after the foreclosure process has started. So essentially, it's perjury. Interesting. Marie, do you have an attorney, or did you have an attorney helping you? I had an attorney, but he didn't really help me. Okay. He wanted me to pay all this money that Nation Star asked, like $14,000 in cash. If I would have had $14,000 in cash, I wouldn't have been in the predicament to begin with. So I had to let the lawyer go, and I did it myself. Now, this is a house that you've lived in for how many years? 37 years. 37 years. And was it all paid for at one point? Yeah. Okay. And so recently you took out a loan to fix it up? 
In 2006, I took out a loan with Centex out of Tempe, Arizona, to fix up my house, yes. And, and so now that it's all fixed up, yeah. uh, Nation Star, is it? Yeah. Yes. Decides to buy your loan. Yeah. And they modified your loan. Yeah. What, what was the modification? It, was it because of uh, the, you couldn't pay it all back right away? No. Oh, we'll should. be right back after this. And we're back with Marie Miller and uh, Representative Tim Comerford. Uh, we were talking about the uh, the North Star or was Nation, it? Nation Star, Star. Uh, taking over your your mortgage. Uh, you basically took out a loan to, to fix up the house. Yes. Uh, it wasn't a, a full remortgaging of the house. Uh, how, if you don't mind me, how much was the loan for? A hundred thousand. A hundred thousand, and it fixed it up. And, yeah. And uh, the payments were being you were being helped with with your son. Yes. Uh, he was falsely imprisoned. Yeah. Uh, then he's let out. Is he still out or is he still in prison? Or? Oh, he was found not guilty after 11 months in prison. Okay, in the meantime, you're struggling with the payments of your right. house. Right. Oh my gosh. Um, now, there was one other thing. Now, I sit on the redress of committee. Uh, there, there, there was an interesting thing about the insurance as well. Yes. Tell me you about listened well, Mr. Arvard. I'm very impressed with you. Oh. When, when, Centex switched my mortgage over to Nation Star. I got all kinds of letters. My payment jumped one month up to $1,900 because they wanted to put another homeowner's insurance on me. I had a homeowner's insurance for $980 a year with Nationwide, which covered 171 thousand for the dwelling right. a very nice I had a very nice insurance a nation star wanted to give me one where the dwelling would have only been covered for a hundred and fifty one thousand and their their yearly premium would have been two thousand dollars and they wanted to put it onto my loan so my house payment jumped up to $1,400 one month. So this is why you needed to, uh, uh, a modification, is because Nation Star said, listen, you've got to yes. buy our insurance. Our insurance. Nation Star tried to force their insurance on her in an illegal move. That doesn't sound legal to me. Na nation, uh, nationwide insurance is a perfectly reputable national insurance carrier with, with you know, great coverage and great financial stability. So for a mortgage company like Nation Star, who most people in New England I've ever talked to have never even heard of to tell you that that's not good enough. That just stinks to me. It doesn't seem right. Is, is it in the mortgage agreement that you have to, to, to buy their mortgage insurance? Not theirs. You have One to have of insurance. my own choice. Right. You have to have a homeowner's insurance. But so couldn't you tell Nation Star to pound sand and I'm going to keep my nationwide insurance? Well, they didn't listen to me. I talked to them over the phone and told them that I already have an insurance and I don't need theirs and they wouldn't listen. Nobody listened to me. And so they automatically bumped up her insurance premiums, which made her not able to, uh, it, it yeah. broke your budget. Yeah. And so then you said, well, or they, then they offered you a loan modification. This seems like a bullying tactic to me. Yeah, essentially yes. that's what yes. it is. They, I think these companies try to, you know, you know, badger, you know, older folks into, uh, you know, essentially it's a swindle trying to get them to buy their more expensive and inferior products. Because the nation, nationwide insurance was a less expensive premium and a higher coverage policy. And NationStar offered her a more expensive policy that covered less. Yeah. So uh, it makes no sense. If you, if you were worried about your investment, the home being protected, you would offer a good policy. NationStar didn't do that. So Nation Star forced you out of nationwide yes. yeah. homeowners insurance yeah. uh, through buying your mortgage and then forcing you to buy their insurance. Yes. Uh, does Nationwide know about this? I never told them. Oh, I never told them, and I kept my coverage with yeah. Nationwide. Oh, you did keep your coverage yeah. with Nationwide, so you yeah. didn't buy Nation Star's no. insurance. Okay. And I think that was a one of the primers to this, this foreclosure mess. 
they, they stopped accepting her checks and they sent them all back and that, that landed her in foreclosure. And the judge, the second judge on the case refused to force them to prove standing. They haven't proven any standing because they haven't produced an original note. And according to that New Hampshire statute 382-A colon 3-501, you have to prove standing when you uh, demand payment on an instrument, nobody has. How long has this been going on? Since 2008. In 2008. Now, where are you exactly right now in, in, the, in this whole process? Well, due process was denied. My rights were violated and there were violations of canons by the judges in Superior Court and New Hampshire Supreme Court. So, my rights were totally denied in due process. The, the Supreme Court just remanded my case back to Superior Court in, in March of 2012. And I had, uh, I had orders and decisions back and forth that I would have another hearing. After the 10th of April, I was supposed to have another hearing. In the 25th of March, they already decided to give them a written possession in Superior Court of, of Stratford County. Even before the hearing? Yeah. How does I mean, that... There was, there was one time where I showed up to, uh, to the court with, with uh, Marie and a man named Christopher King out of uh, the Boston area, Massachusetts. He does a... Uh, a blog, uh, you know, mortgagemovies.com and kingcast.net. I seen him in there. Where in, in, he in, in, uh, in. he exposes a lot of this fraud going on because he used to be a producer of title insurance. He knows how this works, and uh, at the time there was a hearing that day. They canceled it and they rescheduled it again. So for February, so we arrive in February, and they said, "Well, Nation Star's attorneys have withdrawn their motions. This matter for now is, is uh, on the back burner." So now they come back uh, now and we get a, a motion that says, oh, here's a writ of possession, even though that motion was withdrawn and the hearing was canceled. And the Supreme Court remanded it to Judge John Lewis of the Stratford County Superior Court over in Dover. As of yet, we haven't gotten a hearing date out of Stratford County <laughs> Superior Court. So how you issue a writ of possession without having a hearing, I frankly, that's asinine. I don't understand. So at, at this stage, you're potentially going to be homeless very soon. Well, I'm not going to move out of my home. What, I, is, did the sheriff say, I'm coming to, to, to evict you at some point? As a matter of fact, the sheriff never gave me the eviction notice that he usually delivers to people. Okay. The sheriff, Estes, never gave that to me. He just called me by telephone and told me. And I, in return, filed a notice to Sheriff Estes that I will not leave my home, pointing out that Nation Star failed to produce my original note. And I had no due process in, co in, in courts. All my rights were violated. And I told him I'm, I have no intention to move out of my home. And that's how I left it with Sheriff Estes. But he called me last Thursday, which would have been the third of the third of April, May, the third of May, Sheriff Estes called me and said he has to move because the, the judges are breathing down his neck. So who who's breathing down his neck? The judges. The judges. Okay. And I said, well, Sheriff Estes, you are the highest lawmaker in Stratford County. How can you let anybody breathe down your neck? You got to straighten them out <laughs> and put the law down. You in charge of it, and you have the right to put the law down. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's his duty to protect and serve me. How, how did and that Marie go Miller over? issued a, uh, a demand to cease and desist to the sheriff's uh, department. Yeah. Because well, the court has yet to once again, yet to rule on, on, her, on her motion to produce, to produce the documentation. And the sheriff is, a, is the highest uh, law enforcement agent in the county. In the state, the sheriff's department has, sheriff's departments in each county have more power than the state police do. They can block 
the uh, entrance of the uh, to the county to federal agents. They can, you know, uh, control uh, evictions and so forth. So the, he he has the total power to uh, intervene here for for the good. Hmm. And it, does he seem sympathetic to your cause? Uh, does he understand the the the, the, the uh, your plight as as where? He was a gentleman speaking to me. Mm -hmm. I have to give him that. Okay. He was a gentleman. What he thinks, I don't know. And what he's going to do, I don't know. Marie, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, mm -hmm. how would they do that? And my cell phone, that's 603-285-5623. Do you have an email that you would want public? I do not at the moment. Okay. But we could use my son's email, which is fenwaymagic at yahoo.com. Fenway? Fenway magic at yahoo.com. Like the ballpark. Like the ballpark. Yeah. Uh, Representative Comfort, do you have a, an email that people can, can reach you at if they wanted to know more about this case? Sure. It's, uh, it's my first name, Tim underscore my last name, uh, C-O-M-E-R-F-O-R-D, Comerford, at yahoo.com. And my home number is 603-895-2493. Uh, is, is there something that, that, that somebody can do to, to reach out and, and help in, in this matter? Is, do you need attorneys to help out? I think it would be very helpful to have an attorney who's, who's aware of, of uh, the MERS process and the, uh, and the fraud that's involved in these uh, illegal foreclosures. There are uh, attorneys out there who have knowledge of it. It's just that I don't know if they're in the New England area or not. Oh, uh, Christopher King uh, used to be an assistant uh, attorney general out in Ohio, but he's no longer a practicing attorney, so he uh, can't get involved that way. But uh, he has very good uh, documentation on his blog, so I invite people to check that out. Okay, and, if, and you would definitely welcome a. a an attorney to help do this oh, process. Mo most, most certainly, yes. Uh, there, there is extreme bias in the judiciary uh, to, as to pro se litigants. You know, for instance, you know, a member of the bar attorney, if so, if they miss a deadline or file something improperly, they give them a pass. But if somebody's pro se, they hammer you at every turn and every instance they get. You got one not I not dotted or one T not crossed. Boom, you lose. And I really think that's a shame. Hmm. Looks like uh, we need to, to reform maybe the, the court system. Uh, that that is definitely necessary. Uh, one thing we're going to have to do, and I plan on sponsoring some measures uh, next term if I'm reelected to uh, take New Hampshire out of the non-judicial foreclosure system and uh, reform it that way. We should have to have prove standing before you take people's property. I applaud you, by the way, to uh, for all your efforts with with Marie. Uh, you know, it's that's your personal time that you're. You've taken out. You're a state representative. You get a hundred dollars a year, <laughs> you know. And I do applaud you for your service. Well, thank you. And I, you know, I. The reason why I wanted to run for state rep was so I could, you know, uphold the Constitution, protect the people's liberties, and actually be worth my salt. You know, for some reason or another, Marie's local representative didn't want to touch this. But I said, you know what? This isn't right. Somebody needs to stand up for this poor lady before she gets railroaded. And, you know, I just felt like that, hey, you know what, if that has to be me, that's just fine. At least I'm doing my duty. Well, I never would have heard about this myself unless you brought it before the Redress of Grievance Committee. Uh, and we're trying to get the message out uh, as far as that committee is concerned. And, and people need to be heard. They need to know that some people are falling through the cracks, whether it's through the judiciary or any part of the branch of governments, which it seems to me that somebody dropped the ball in your case. Uh, pretty evident. Yeah. Um, so uh, we wanted to make it available for people to, to contact you. As of right now, though, is there an impending date that you are supposed to be out of that house? Well. Not that you're going to leave, but. I'm not going to leave, no. Uh, they snuck already in an order the 25th of March for rid of possession and put on there that I have 90 days to move out, and they never even sent me that writ of possession from the court. They kept it away from me. They never sent it to my home. So you didn't sign a, a document saying or received uh, something from the sheriff's no. office? No. 
They so kept, how do you know about this? Because the sheriff called me the 25th of April, four weeks later than they, when they gave them the writ of possession. I saw the, paper, I saw the paperwork. Uh, how can this court issue a writ of possession and never notice the other party in the case that it ever happened? The paperwork that I saw was dated March 25th, and then she just got a call from the sheriff you know, a few weeks ago in April. you got to be kidding me. There's a total severe lack of, 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 uh, of due process in, in this case, and it's just it's absolutely absurd. They, it was remanded to Judge Lewis. Judge Lewis never issued a date for a hearing, never, never received any paperwork about a hearing, and they just issued this writ of possession out of the blue. It's, it's just, it's unacceptable. It's absolutely unacceptable. Yes, it's totally unacceptable because the 10th of April, I got a decision from the court that there will be a hearing coming forth. The 10th of April. And already the 25th of March, they gave them the writ of possession. Yes, there was no hearing. Yeah, no, no hearing. hearing. It, it's, it's contradictable on their part. And I don't know why they did it. I mean, it's absolutely absurd. Well, we're going to be following this very closely, and uh, we're going to try to get the word out for you. Uh, and again, if they want to contact you, they have it uh, on. Uh, we have it on tape when yes. we, when we uh, re-air this. Uh, I, I wish you the best, and we hopefully we can we can help you out. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Well, Is there any final thoughts? Well, thank you very much, Kevin. And I, th I think you've been a, a fine member of the Redress Committee. And I, yes. I really appreciate serving with you and, uh, and the group of new representatives that have uh, come to the New Hampshire House to do the people's work o op openly and honestly. And, and that's what we, we strive for. And, and I thank you very much for having us on. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we'll be closing out with some final thoughts uh, until next week. Well, there you have it. Speak Up New Hampshire brings on another case. A woman, again, a widow, uh, a victim of robo-signing. She has petitioned the Redress of Grievance Committee, and she's looking for help in any way you can, we can help her. If you're an attorney and you feel uh, you would like to take on her case pro se and help her out so that she's not homeless, please contact her or contact speakupnh at gmail.com. And if you'd like to be a sponsor of this show to help people like Marie and other people to get the, the voice out, please contact us at the same address, speakupnh at gmail.com. We're looking to help other people, and please help us in the process. Thank you very much.